Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where amongst the many things we say are that you do not have to hey, be Hey, hey there. Good morning. You good do not have to be evening, religious. Are. You really back. do not. Nobody requires that of you. However, that doesn't mean you get to lie about history, lie about science, lie about religious people. So please stop doing that. Uh, please support our work on redpillreligion.com. Redpillreligion.com, where every day we are posting new materials, either articles, written by us, submissions from others, videos by us, submissions from others. In these days of social media censorship, we have ha we have had our channel suspended and taken out multiple times. This is about the third or fourth time. We expect to see further efforts to remove this channel. Uh, so we are still looking at other platforms to be on. We still do our best to back up all our content so it will be available on other platforms. But please always remember, you can find us on redpillreligion.com if we disappear off of YouTube. Uh, we could use your financial support. We'd like to upgrade equipment and and add more uh, features. And we, we are still a shoestring group operating on limited funds and constantly under attack by uh, especially the ideological atheist community, which for the most part, the ideological atheist community cannot stand up to a real argument, a real fight, can't back their stuff up for the most part. Um, we made our bones here, by the way, by the way, I am Max, um, and we've made our bones here on Red Pill Religion for a few years now, doing our best, not so much to become popular, uh, as to simply start pointing out to the rest of the general population that the atheist movement is a movement, it's an ideological movement, it's a cult that you join. This is not to say that everyone who thinks there's no God or doesn't believe there's a God or whatever, or lacks belief, um, is automatically part of this cult network. But I gotta tell you, it's very obvious to me as a former atheist that if you're rocking the capital A atheist logo and you're spending all of your time crapping on and insulting and lying about and abusing religious people, which is what most YouTube atheists do most of the time, um, it just becomes obvious that it's it, it, there is no reasoning with the people that we 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 talk to. Uh, the people we respond to. Two years of internet atheist response videos. They never really respond to them honestly. They never link you directly so people can go and, and, and see in full your remarks. They quote you out of context. They accuse you of saying things you didn't say. They accuse you of believing things you didn't believe. Anything but respond. and Anything but respond honestly or engage in an honest conversation where they treat religious people like they're equals. Um, and so for the most part, we are going to where we are going to be doing fewer and fewer atheist response videos, although we'll never stop. The, the purpose of atheist response videos that we do is almost never to try to convince the atheists we're talking to of anything. We don't believe they're convincible. Um, but in any case, um, we will be doing one tonight. This, this was suggested to us by uh, HistoryNet. Say hello to everybody, HistoryNet, by the way. Yeah, Dex. Hey, good to hear from you, brother. Uh, be sure to look for History Net's channel here on YouTube. Go subscribe to it. Uh, oh, History Net's a sort of an eclectic, uh, Protestant -y sort of Christian with a lot of uh, esoteric beliefs. So he's all, and he's always welcome here. Also joining. No, no, no Protestant. No Protestant. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that means, but. Okay, your views are eclectic. Let's just put it that way. By the week, I think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, various faiths and beliefs have truth in them, but no religion owns God. Okay, there. So there you go. So sort of, sort of, kind of not. Yes, no, Christiany. Also, our old friend, one of my 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 veterans from the trenches of the early days from years ago, when when the atheist community was much more powerful and much more influential. Uh, deflating atheism. Say hi to everybody. Deflating. Hi everyone. And by the way, that was three years ago. So just three years. It has been three years, really. Holy cow, man! Three years of dealing with these people. They're so hateful and dishonest. And anyway, also joining us is I believe he's a lapsed Catholic, but he's more or less an atheist now. Doesn't really think there's a god. Our friend Cromwell. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I never said that I, I didn't believe in a god, man. I just just say I think earlier in the stream. Hey, I did not know that. Hey, all you have to do is say that you don't believe in God. It's actually tricky. You make millions of money. <laughs> On YouTube, that's all you have to do to make money on YouTube. I did not know that. <laughs> you know, you don't make millions on YouTube, but all you have to do is look at like the guy we're going to respond to tonight, 
or any of the others we've responded to, you know, in nine out of 10 cases, not all of them, nine out of 10 cases, that is a professional atheist. They are there to proselytize their religion. They are there to lie about other religions. They are there to lie and claim they don't have a religion and they're there to lie and claim that religion is irrational and not evidence-based and may be a sign that you're stupid and delusional. This is professional bigotry. They get paid to do this. Uh, this is why most of them will not be honest about science, will not be honest about history, will not be honest about much of anything because they're professionals, they're con artists. Some of them haven't figured it out yet because they're young to this game and they haven't been here for years and watched how the, the atheist cult recruits people, repeats the same talking points ad road, ad nauseum. Uh, they haven't noticed that basically mostly internet atheism is an, is an exercise in thought policing and punishing people for thought crime and for declaring that atheists are ultimately to be our, our rulers and masters because they believe themselves to be the only rational people on the planet. This, by the way, is also why atheists are generally unpopular and still widely disliked unless you get into a little place where you're sheltered, which YouTube and Google have been sheltering these people for quite some time. They're just getting less and less support now. In any case, so tonight we're going to be responding to uh, I call Mr. Atheist, good looking guy, kind of a 70s look there, but I'm an old guy and I'm, I'm, it's not too different from mine. I wear my hat and beard, my hair and beard like him a lot. This, this guy has the most uh, original and clever username on YouTube. Mr. Atheist, well, why not? You know, and it's nothing personal to you, buddy, but I really hope at some point you figure out you really did join a cult. You are a cult recruiter and uh, uh, you... Well, in any case, um, he's a he's a ex Mormon, so he left one call for another. Mormonism is has done a lot to reform itself over the last few decades to be less cultish. But and I do have Mormon friends, but uh, and you know anybody who wants to come on, who's Mormon who wants to come in and talk about it, feel free. But I, I have very it doesn't surprise me that atheists recruit heavily from Mormons and Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witness especially because that's a very much a, a mind control group. Uh, Mormonism less so, but they got some real issues with that, especially when you start questioning certain things. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. They're, they're it's all, like I've yeah, seen Jehovah's come at my door, and they're annoying as hell. Let me just point out to this guy: if he's an ex-Mormon, that what he's going to find long term, the longer he's in it, he, he's in atheism. You know, the capital A organized atheism. He's going to find that internet atheism and the atheist collective that he has joined uh, is far more intolerant than the Mormon churches, than, than the LDS churches, far more likely to throw you out for a heretic, as a heretic, far more likely to shun you, far more likely to smear your name and try and destroy you and break you down psychologically. Because by the way, Mr. Atheist, they've done that to a lot of ex-atheists. Um, I'm not one, I'm not the only one either. We've re interviewed quite a few people who've run into this, but he's young and he doesn't know all this. I like the hair anyway. He seems like a pleasant fellow, at least at first. Uh, why don't we go ahead and jump in on our recording of this? There's seven signs that you're going to be an atheist soon. Hey, Max, I think we have some new people here. So do you want to? Oh, we did have a couple of other people join late. Let's... Yeah, I jumped in. Craig Reed, Hi. I don't know if we've met. What's your background? I know that HistoryNet wanted you in. What's your background, Craig? Um, I'm a Christian. I became a Christian in, what, 2000 when I moved out to California. And I've been doing um, right, kind of like makeshift apologetics on Twitter for the last two years. And what kind of Christian, more or less a sola scriptura Bible guy? or uh... um, I, I guess it's called non-denominational, but that means a lot of different things to different people. Um, yeah, yeah, right. More or less a sola scriptura tradition. And that's... Uh, yeah. Um, Oh, and I forgot, we also have John Baptiste here, who's been a founding team member and part of the managerial group here on Red Pill Road Vision from the beginning. Say hi, John Baptiste. Hello. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and, there's, since there's only seven of these, I haven't even watched this yet, because I've done so many atheist response videos, and they're so all identical in everything they say all the time. Um, we're just going to jump into this, but we'll see if I get any surprises, um, if these guys come up with anything new. <laughs> Let's have a look. Here we go. We'll play the first sign that you're about to be an atheist. I have something pretty special for you. I got some of my friends. We're friends, right? I have friends, right? To help me out with these seven signs. So without further ado, let's get started. 
Seven signs you'll be an atheist one day. Number one, you avoid those God questions that bother you. If you find that you avoid questions about God because they make you feel uncomfortable, questions like, how can a God exist who's loving while at the same time there are so many terrible things happening in the world? Or how come nobody's, well, it feels like nobody's listening to me when I pray. Or so many other things that butt up against your own notion of God that you'd rather just not hear it or stay away from it altogether because it just doesn't feel good. Well, you may become an atheist soon. Well, that's a rather impressive cult recruiting <laughs> technique, um, which is exactly what that is. Uh, because, of course, in reality, everybody sane has doubts. And everybody sane winds up having a number of very common, very common, easily identified problems that anybody who's been seriously religious for a long time, like a priest or a pastor or anybody else, should be familiar with. There are good questions to any of these that are causing you doubts. Um, if your pastor at your church or uh, whatever religion, by the way, because we are not a Christian apologetic show, we defend all religions uh, against atheist onslaught and lies about them um, because atheism itself makes no sense. And I think you'll figure that out eventually, Eric, because uh, uh, really atheism is dumb. Um, the main thing you would do if you were honest is you would say, hey, maybe you should find somebody smart when you have these doubts. Mm -hmm. Go find somebody smart and tell them about the doubts you're having. Now, that might be hard if you're in some of the more controlling groups like Jehovah's Witness or Mormonism, which, by the way, um, really are not considered by most Christians to be Christians. Sorry, my Mormon friends. Uh, if you're not Trinitarian, you got a problem. Um, but the, 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 who else wants to, to address this? Or you could just draw from the from the vast literature of, of, of apologetics and, 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 you know, read the church fathers and, you know, there's a whole lot of information out there. And so uh, I don't know the answer to this question, therefore I'll become an atheist. No, that's not. That's yeah, not that's the logic. Uh, all like, I got are like, all I got are just highlighted, uh, highlighted quote, hi highlighted notes of the writings of Rene Gonon, of Rene Gonon on my Kindle. Oh, okay. I don't know who Rene Godon is, but um, uh, the bottom line is, yeah, what they're pointing out here is true. There are always answers if you'll bother to seek them. What's most noticeable about people in your cult movement um, is, is that uh, you don't seek them. Uh, what's also noticeable about those who've been in this cult movement of, a, of internet atheism, militant atheism, organized atheism, which is irrefutably a cult movement, by the way, is that you guys often get answers to these doubts you say we have, and you don't acknowledge the answers. You just straw man and lie about the religious people who are answering you. This, this has been my experience both as an ex- well, it's also- Huh? It's also the questions are like, I, I never understand why these questions are considered so game changing. You know, they're like, they're like philosophical questions that go back for centuries. They don't necessarily have anything to do. I mean, I can understand why people want to answer them, but to then go, okay, I can't answer this, answer this about life. Therefore, there's no God. I'll become an atheist. It doesn't necessarily follow. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't see how it. It's it's not or less base. It's not like oh you could just uh, you know pick a spirit, pick a spirit you want to talk to. No, no, it's just that the entity sort of comes to you to talk to. The, now, the entity wants to pick you. Now, uh, just so to be clear, I am not a creationist, at least not in the sense that most atheists would call it a creationist. I believe that God is the, the divine intelligence operating the universe. None of us are. Um, yeah, I don't think any of us are. Um, no, uh, I'm not. Uh, but. If I wanted to, I could make this sort of argument, too. Here's, you know, signs that you are giving up your belief in evolution. Because guess what? If you've actually studied evolution, which I have, and I've read some of the best uh, evolutionary biologists in the world, um, I don't read Christian creationist texts. I read regular science texts. And uh, for the most part, uh, there's issues all over the place in evolutionary theory. There's problems. There's challenges. There's confusions. To take this guy's uh, thinking to its logical conclusion is that if you're confused about everything in evolution and uh, you, you, you don't understand something or some assertion being made by evolutionary biologists doesn't make sense to you, 
that's a sign you're about to become a Ken Ham acolyte. No, I'm sorry, that logic doesn't follow. All you're doing here, sir, is saying that if you doubt something and you're confused about something, that's a sign that you're just wrong rather than maybe you should investigate more. By the way, if you're in a church where a pastor can't give you a good answer to uh, challenges you're having uh, because everybody struggles a little bit with what they believe and why they believe it, uh, try another church. Uh, try another group. Try, like like, like the plating said, the, uh, and Cromwell and others said, there's a vast amount of literature out there if you would bother to check it. All right, let's see what the next one has to say. <laughs> Number two, you listen. No, like really, you listen. You actually listen to your opponent when they speak. One of the signs <laughs> of dogmatic thinking is affirmation seeking. When engaging in dialogue, instead of being interested in and considering the position that's being presented, instead you're looking for holes, for opportunities to assert your perspective and refute the opposition. Become more open to the possibility that your position is as fallible as you are, the perspective can shift. Instead of wanting an opportunity to present your case and reinforce your existing perspective, you become more interested in challenging it. Instead of just affirmation, you seek the opportunity to scrutinize and criticize your beliefs. When this paradigm shift takes place, an interlocutor is no longer perceived as an opponent. Instead, they are a means by which to be exposed to an opposing perspective, to challenge yourself and ensure your positions are sound and reasonable and justified. This can begin to place you into the perspective of the opposing side. When this happens, more often than not, you start to honestly admit to yourself that it's reasonable and it makes sense. This may not always lead to deconversion itself, but it tears down some important walls. Instead of being closed, you're open. And that means that you have to ask yourself some really hard questions. I, I, I keep, okay, now I have a, a history with this lady and I, I, I'm gonna, straight up, I don't like her or trust her. Um, and so I'm going to try and be uh, limited in, in, in what I say. I have pledged less vituperation. I don't. But having watched this woman in action, I, I will tell you that everything she just said there is ironic because she's one of the most closed-minded individuals I've ever met. I have watched her go over the clear and irrefutable evidence that there is something beyond her ideological worldview that she defends, and she's completely closed to it. One of the most jaw-dropping things I ever saw was when she got together with her pseudo a pseudoscientist friend, a, a, a year, decades out of date physicist, who pu uh, pu you know pushes decades out of date evolutionary biology because apparently the atheist collective can't get any real biologists to, to de de debunk um, uh, uh, you know young earth creationism and crap like that, but. I, I, I'm sorry, madam, you're one of them. You're describing yourself. Have you bothered looking in the mirror and noticing? Have you bothered to talk to all the many of us who reconsidered that we've had on our show, that we've, uh, a few a couple of us have come on shows you've been on. Um, they won't be back most likely, but um, when do you get to question your atheist proposition? And when do you ever admit you've been wrong about things you've said in, about the history that you've been wrong, things you've said in science? When are you even going to admit that the near-death experience research that you misrepresented is in fact irrefutably evidence that there is a God um, and an afterlife? Because it is irrefutably science, scientific evidence that there is a God and an afterlife. Now you may question the evidence, um, and you may decide you personally don't find the evidence convincing, but that's all you're doing. In point of fact, you have yet to acknowledge that there is a su substantial evidence, Shannon, that there is, a, there is an afterlife and that there may be something like a God. You failed to acknowledge any of it and you've misrepresented much of it. And, you know, have a ha habit of condescending to anyone who questions your ideology. Does anybody else have anything they want to say to this lady? Yes. Yeah, yeah, from a notebook. Because her eyes wander from looks like to something on screen. And you can see in the reflection of her eyes, some type of some pages up or document maybe well sure but that's not that's not that's okay she's reading from a script i you know we don't know if she wrote the whole thing it was a lot of big words made to sound like if you <laughs> become an atheist you'll become free thinking if you become one of us and you believe what we believe we claim we believe nothing but if you believe what we believe about religion about religious people if you believe what we believe about science you'll be the open minded free thinking one but if you reject the conclusions we've drawn from the evidence you're just one of the closed minded people 
I'm sorry, you're not, atheists have nothing on, on the rest of us in terms of being closed-minded or open-minded. And there's nothing open-minded about the atheist position, especially the organized, cultish, professional, atheist for cash, so-called deconvert people for cash. Listen, we know, what, we know what you're going through. Just let go. Join yeah. us, please. We have cookies. Yeah. <laughs> on a bus. Nice. On a bus. Also, she looks like a synth. She looks like, what? Uh, no, wow. what? Like a from, synth. From Fallout 4, a synth. Uh, n- no need for that. Um, she looks like a synth? Uh, yeah, well, she does. <laughs> yeah, she does you know, look those, a little robotic. Well, yeah, it's, it's those uh, those uh, human robots. Like, well, uh, well, if you're reading from a prompter, it doesn't help. Everybody here reads from... It's okay when you're reading a video to read from a script. I'm not going to... Oh, no, everybody, I'm not, everybody who does YouTube vids reads from a script. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just really saying when like you're recording yourself reading from a script, you can't help but look a little bit robotic sometimes. It well, just no, comes with like, reading well, it. No, that's fair. Most YouTubers that's fair. Yeah, I don't, want to, like I don't want to attack her personally. I don't like her. I don't trust her. Um, certainly wouldn't have her on here again until she gets more honest, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go after her on that one. Uh, I, I, I do note, however, you know, in a, one, of the, one of the scientific facts we know about atheists that none of these people would acknowledge, I sent Rich Shannon research on this, more than 9 out of 10 atheists are male, and more than 9 out of 10 of them uh, come from broken, divorced homes and have really bad relationships with their fathers, usually also with their mothers. It is an emotional condition because, uh, honestly, uh, a truly lack of belief position would be an agnostic position that is open to the possibility that there is a God, that there is an afterlife, that there may be gods or other spirits. That would be the true open-minded position. This is not what you represent, madam. You represent a dogmatic yes. set of beliefs that you defend against all believers and where you dismiss automatically and object to automatically every bit of evidence that's given you. You've yep. even got all kinds of websites we should. so you can Google up your, your pre-canned answers. I watched yeah. Yeah, we should we should just address the argument. Well, what what uh, there? I've said this before. I'll say it again. If if you really want to tie an atheist up with their with their claim of doxastic openness, that they're just willing to consider anything, and that they are singularly open minded, just ask them a question. Okay, then are you open to the possibility that there is good and solid evidence that God exists, and that maybe people who believe in God have a have, uh, better information and better understanding than you do. Ask them that question and, wa- and watch them uh, stammer uh, at that point. Uh, hmm. if, if I was going to give a, a, a stylistic criticism of, of Shannon Q, my criticism would be that she takes forever to say absolutely nothing. There was no content in what she said. And uh, what I did pick up on is uh, she she used uh, the argot of the, of the street epistemologist. She... She called. She called the person you engage in dialogue with the uh, interlocutor, which seems strange. But if you know a little bit about street epistemology, that's kind of the terminology they use. And this whole thing is based on uh, religious people have these ideological blinders on. Uh, it is our duty to uh, to help them cast off the shackles of their indoctrination. These people do not believe in a two way dialogue. No matter what she says. The street epistemologists do not believe in two-way dialogue. They believe that they are going to uh, de-brainwash you, basically. So it, it's 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 debate in in the absolute most bad faith terms. Well, yeah, that's, and- that's why these people tend to gravitate towards progressive politics. When you look at that, yeah, and that's exactly just- how progressive leftists act when it comes to debate and trying to discuss people with political like ideas. Yeah. yeah. And to, to take it a step further, like it's an argument that, you know, the one she just presented is easily one that goes both ways about like listening to the opponent and actually, you know, trying to steel man them instead of straw man them and things like that. That's something that easily goes both ways. Yeah. But you're absolutely yeah, right. You know, true. they wouldn't give that consideration to, you know, somebody talking about religion because they've already made up their mind, which is fine, but don't pretend like, you know, you're having the open discussion, like you're somehow open to, like, the belief in God, and you're somehow ready to be reconverted at some point if you hear a good enough argument. Like, none of these people in this video are open to that possibility, even remotely, and it's a little bit disingenuous on her part to sort of present, like, you know, it's even a possibility, which I think is somewhat the message behind this point. 
Yeah, well, hey, so hey, be, hey, Billy, I didn't know you're you're still a conqueror. I thought you were a scribe now. Uh, I haven't. This conqueror. is my YouTube channel. Just, listen, let's stay it. on track, guys. Let's stay on track. <laughs> All right, on this last, did anybody else want to get a point in before I move on? Yeah, I just uh, want to say it was based on the presupposition that that we own open mindedness, we own open dialogue, yeah. and, and you are the people in your ideological shackles, and they're operating for that from that presupposition. Yeah, and and drawing draw, deriving income from that pre yes. presupposition. Anybody else? Well, you, you could you could see all that that Shannon Q has done that in on this channel. Um, she she has gone into a discussion. Uh, with 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 being closed-minded uh, about things, she she wouldn't open her uh, mind that there are other other ways to attack young earth creationism, like through actual you know theology and, and study, you know, as opposed to using someone like Richard Carrier, we um to, uh. to to do that or or her um her argument that because there are young earth creationists going into science something has to be done because they are the enemy. Yeah, um, absolutely. Anybody else? Otherwise, we're going to move on. Well, uh, basically, her using the uh, dog. Basically, her she, using the I think if she, if she really wanted to uh, be say that she's as open-minded, she says, I'd say she pick up a, she at least pick up some of, some of, she read some theology, take a background and let's talk to an actual credible religious scholar or theologian. Um, and, and I, I pick up some of the metaphysical book that pretty much a asks questions like this and try to weigh in on some of the ideas as well. And by hanging out with Carrier, she's not doing herself any favors. No, yeah. she's really not. He's not credible as a historian or anything else except as a hate monger and a cult leader. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, fun fact. Uh, uh, this is basically one of the quotes from uh, from Ganon's book, uh, the Spiritual Authority and Temporal Power. Uh, it is easy now to understand that the reversal of the relationships between knowledge and action in a civilization is a consequence is a consequence of the usurpation of su of supremacy by the temporal power. This power must, in fact, claim that there is no domain superior to its own, which is precisely that of action. If matters stopped there, however, we would still not have reached our present impasse, where knowledge is is denied of any value. I, uh, I'm just going to, this, I'm going to make this as my final comment and then we're going to move on to the last one. People referenced it. Please do, uh, and, you know, someone said, let's go back to the topic, but it's been mentioned by a couple people. Um, these people are using rote talking points and rote methodologies that you can, um, uh, go look for yourself. A good starting point is this book, A Manual for Creating Atheists, which is kind of the handbook that the street epistemologists that, uh, someone was mentioning earlier, uh, this is a manual that is constructed exactly like they construct recruiting materials for Scientology, like they construct recruiting materials for selling you timeshare condos or magazines. I don't know if anybody does that for magazine subscriptions anymore, but for condos or for whatever. I'm sorry, this is a cheap sales pitch, and it's very dishonest. They, you know, yeah. they claim it's just a way of you know thinking independently and all that. No, it always starts with these presuppositional questions and these I and 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 you know pretending they're innocent. One of the things they always do is say, "I'm nobody in particular. I don't represent anybody. I don't believe anything in particular." Can we have a friendly conversation? I just want to ask you some questions, and they're all loaded questions. And what I recommend is anybody who is being fooled by cult recruiters in the atheist network is to go read a manual for creating atheists and then just start deconstructing it or talk to somebody smart about it. And by the way, if you don't know anybody smart, come to us. Uh, we'll give you recommendations. Be sure to come check us out on our free Discord chat room, by the way. Um, no, no, no. This is a religious cult that these people are in. And, and if it, in, in a very mind closed, closing, uh, very intolerant, very thought control oriented, uh, and ultimately totalitarian movement. Okay, um, you know, even if some of the people in it are pretty. So let's move on. Yeah, yeah. before we get on to this one, Cyrus is one of the good ones. Who is? Cyrus, the next guy. Okay. This is oh, like Cyrus. the only good uh, uh, argument. See. There aren't many that I would consider at this, but, but they are. They're out there. We've had good interviews with some friendly atheists. We've also got atheist volunteers on this team. Um, so in any case, here we go. Next one. Number three, you don't take your holy book literally. Oh. You might slowly oh. find yourself turning into an atheist or at the very least a religious non if you have a habit of not taking your holy book literally for whatever reason. 
let's take the Bible, for instance. If you start out from a strong position and then slowly start finding yourself backpedaling every single time you find that one of the claims in the Bible can't be justified as a literal claim, you'll find that the more times you have to throw something into the bucket of metaphor, the more bricks you're tearing down around your faith. If you think of your faith as a brick building, every single time you take part of your faith and translate it into metaphor, you are taking one of those bricks away. Eventually, you'll be left with nothing more than a foundation to build up from. And now that you've already discarded all of the old bricks and metaphors, you might not be using the same type of bricks to rebuild your house. After all, why did you get rid of them in the first place? How many pieces and parts of your faith do you have to strip away before the faith simply isn't there anymore? On that, how much of your faith is directly tied to the literature of your faith? If so much of your faith relies on that literature and you start discarding the literature, what truly is left? You just might find that when rebuilding these walls for your metaphorical house, you might not be left with the same perspective as you had before where the walls once stood. Soros is, I, I remember seeing a, some of his stuff before, and he didn't seem that bad. He's got an open invitation to come and talk to us. Um, I don't know if he'll take it, but, 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 but he does. Um, no, bi biblical scholarship, that's how we determine what is metaphorical and what is... Uh... Literal. And just because it's an allegory doesn't mean it's not true. Yeah, like this is it's it's very odd that he sort of suggests that just because something is metaphor, it sort of has to be torn down without any more justification than, oh, if you can't. I think it, if you can't say it's literally true, like I'm not getting the point in that. Uh, I think his point is that he's, talk, he's talking about the cultural shifts between like today and back then with Christianity. Like he's saying that because we have to adapt to a changing culture like stuff that would be illegal today or, you know, it's the straw man of using the fact that Christians back in the old days did, did things very differently compared to what we're doing today. So he's saying that we're metaphorically stripping our faith away to try and make sure it's like politically correct or adapting to our changing culture. Uh, all I got to say is um, when you look at the scriptures carefully, you have to look, you have to go all the way back to, uh, well, to the Near Eastern context and the history of the region at the time, and what was the uh, perennial wisdom as well? Yeah, like with the like the Ugaritic text can help us determine the poetic language of the Old Testament. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm, I I want to point out what's at the root of this, and this is again, this is something I would point out to Suris, and I, I'm not kidding, by the way, Suris, when I say that you and your fellows here are in a religious cult because you are in one. Um, I know it's very well, he, he's he's agnostic atheist. He's hanging out with the atheist cult crowd, and he is repeating their talking points. Um, and he appears to be unaware. You know, and he does seem to lack a lot, a little self awareness here. Here's a real important point. One of the shell games that they help indoctrinate you with, and 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 they do indoctrinate you. By the way, when you join atheism, they really do. Um, um, uh, the, the when you so-called deconvert, which is by the way cult phrasing. There's no such thing as deconverting. You convert from a, from 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 a Christian worldview to an atheist worldview. From an atheist worldview, you maybe you convert to a Buddhist worldview. Uh, converting isn't about you know. They like to act as if converting to a religion is some kind of fundamental change to who you are as a person. And it's not true. It's just changing the point of view. In, in this scenario, you could convert from a Democrat to a Republican or a Republican to a Democrat or whatever. Um, and and uh, the, so every time I hear that deconvert crap, I cringe. It's just so elitist, so pompous, and so... Well, but, they're yeah. they're going to get on you for using like uh, religion in some of the sense you are because they're going to accuse you of being like a Petersonite and like talking about religion in this sense of oh religion is just like this binding moral tenant and you know I d I think you know I I like Peterson's work and I like what he does as a psychologist but they are I'm just preparing you for what they're going to say because they are going to accuse you oh. of being a Petersonite. Oh, let's oh let's boy, I cannot let's wait. Go to What's well, because atheists hate Peterson due to the fact that he's really intellectual in the sense that he, he knows their game and knows how to work his way around it. Like a lot of the atheist community is made up of people with some either developmental or mental issue where they really can't handle a person who knows the language <clears throat> and, and, and one of them mentally get past their gymnastics. Hence why a lot of people joke saying atheist has a lot of autism in it. Because that's been a <laughs> common joke about atheism is that it attracts a lot of autistic people. Let's not get into too. Uh, I'm the exception to the rule, man. Oh, I'm the exception. <laughs>
Yep. And one of, Her- wow. one of Harris's uh, biggest uh, sickle fans, uh, rationality rules, or as I call them, irrationality drools. He's he's just pissed that his uh, patron Saint Harris is losing his audience to Jordan. Hey, yeah, no, that's definitely true. All right, guys, let me get this point out because I didn't get it out. One of the tri- one of the little bits of neuro linguistic programming that the atheism cult that you join or that you hang out with, if you're not you know, totally in it, is they give you this false binary question of is is it literal or is it metaphor i'm sorry you don't seem i mean you guys that, that's a dishonest question all by itself because we are we have far more to go on than literal or metaphorical there's also simile there's also poetry there's also um uh you know things that talk about supernatural elements and since you don't believe there are supernatural elements even though we have evidence for them you just decide to read them primitively is what's very common in this group and And the bible and uh to address the more emotional atheists which service is not but yeah the bible is not just a book it's a library of many different texts of different kinds genres dates and intentions history poetry uh tales that may in fact be you know not literally true but keep a have a deep spiritual message this is nothing new this is nothing challenging Furthermore, the thing I would say, say to Suris is he should apply that to his own views of religion. Um, I would also say that he's not, I, I do say that this is a problem with Sola Scriptura. It's why I'm not a Protestant anymore, um, because I truly, and most Christians believe the Bible was not meant to be read all by itself. If you're coming out of a tradition that says you just read the Bible and you don't need anything but the Bible, you're in a minority of a minority. You're I even think- in a, a minority among Protestants. Yeah, see, I, th- I personally think that, uh, I feel like, I think that atheists as a whole kind of tend to think that all religious people are basically like Calvinists, where you're supposed to take the Bible to the absolute word and literally, and not look at it metaphorically at some times and stuff, because I feel like that's oh, what yeah. I come down upon. It's like everyone's a Calvinist in their eyes, regardless well, well, that's of what, what their faith That's is. what the new atheism is. New atheism is a pure reaction to this sort of fundamentalist uh American ethos, essentially, because that's really where it took off is, you know, in the West in general, but especially in America, where you got people like uh, Harris and Dennett and things like that. And it's really a f- reaction to and, and the rest of the four horsemen, but particularly Harris. It's really well, a re- reaction to the fundamental Christianity that was tied well, in with like the Republican right of Bush back in like the early 2000s and stuff. Well, here's the and so that's why they ev- that's why they all think, you know, every Christian is a fundamentalist because that's what they're bred to argue against. Well, well, here's the funny thing about that is the fact that when you look at the history and stuff like the religious right culturally actually works as a society, whereas atheists in society, they always tend to devolve into some form of authoritarianism that ends in purges and genocide and stuff normally. So no. the religious right has history on their side due to the fact that most of history has been like that, whereas the atheists are basically a failed attempt time and time again with like communist and socialist um, societies that popped up throughout. The oh, last one, one guy, in the, one, got, one of our audience members in the chat says he's a Calvinist. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, 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 <laughs> Calvinists are cool. We support Calvinists. OK, well, that means that's no. not George W. Bush. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's okay, George W. Bush wasn't a religious right man. That guy was a tool. Like anyone who thinks George W. Bush was, oh, yeah, but it's was like, a religious man, if that's a joke. Uh, George like, W. Bush is gets, probably an atheist. Yeah, that's like that's like yeah, because calling George W. Bush like a member of the religious right is like calling Hillary Clinton like an honest politician. It's like no. Yeah. Well, it's it's like he gets lumped in with the rest of it because that was just sort of like the move, like Republican establishment yeah, back just, in the day. The Dumbocrats and their can media comment, hacks. Can I comment on some of this religious right stuff since I'm the old guy in the room who's okay? Who's, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's apart from the topic, but go ahead. Yes, yeah, so the supposed extreme religious right of 10, 15 years ago. That even that some of that is is. It's historical mythology. Now, I never, uh, most Christians never really were fond of the religious right if you look at surveys at the time, but even then they weren't always all that extreme. Um, there's a lot of, you know, questionable history in those assertions. But still, even if you're going to look at people like that, you've got to look at the ideological atheists and what they have done and what they continue to do. Oh, yeah. Stop denying, stop denying that atheists do things in the name of atheism or because of their atheism because it's irrefutable that they do which makes it a worldview and a belief service that needs to be defended. Did anybody else want to get in? we got too many people in here. We're going to have to get some orders. Uh, want to talk? Uh, yeah, one yeah. more time, sure, yeah. 
Excuse me. Well, I just wanted to say something to uh, to uh, John Lovitz in the office and in, in, uh, uh, the critic here, but I think this is going to be a, a running theme here: is that they always end with like therefore atheism. But even if even if uh, you take you don't first off to be metaphorical or to or to be non literal is not to be false, as History Net has already noted. And and of course the Bible is not one book. It it, it is a it is a compilation of several books and several genres over over centuries. But even if you accept the premise that everything in the Bible is false, uh, that you that still doesn't get you to atheism. So it's completely irrelevant to the point of this video. Even if the Bible is wrong, there is still a God. And there is still I mean, yeah. It, it's we, just, we, it's, we, it's, we just don't know anything about it. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe some other religion is right. Um, it, it is by no means rational to simply jump to the atheist uh, conclusion. Um, it simply isn't. I'm sorry. And, and to those who uh, who pro who peddle the meme that um, uh, reading the Bible will make you an atheist, those people will never read Aristotle or Plato. I'll tell you what. I'm actually I've said it many times, but none of these guys want to talk about it. Uh, reading the Bible helped make me an atheist too. It really did. <laughs> um, um, why I don't believe in sola scriptura. But, 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 but back then you weren't educated in ancient Near Eastern literature and stuff like that. Oh, well, I wasn't educated on a lot of things. And I was surrounded by Christians who said it's all in the Bible and just read the Bible. And I read it and it's horrible. I had no real, uh, real, real, uh, real decent education on how to read it properly and to understand it properly. Someone's going to take that out of context. Oh, uh, yeah, the Bible's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Oh, uh, well, for anybody, those who want to read, an, for those in the audience who want a book that tells you how to understand, read and understand your Bible, uh, uh, go go, go uh, get the book, uh, How to Understand Your Bible, A Philosopher's Interpretation of Obscure and Puzzling Images by uh, Manly Palmer Hall. Also, How to Read the Bible by James Kugel and The Unseen Realm by Michael Heiser. I suggest actually reading the Church Fathers and discovering Christian Orthodoxy because that's the only right way to read the Bible. All right, let's get kids. Let's keep going. Um, let's keep going. We got too many people in here. Ah, uh, that's because yeah. that we have so many people and that we have people lining up to do response videos like this should show this something to you guys in the Atheist Collective. Yeah, but a year a year ago when I started watching you, it was just you and deflating. I know, I know. Well, we started something, and it's going to continue. They're not going to be able to get rid of us. The anti-atheist movement is growing, and that's because, and this is something, I'm not accusing Suresh personally of this, but Suresh, you ought to consider the fact that you're in with a bunch of ideological bullies, because you really are. All right, let's, let's go on to another one of these. Number four, you love science. Uh, it's oh. Science extends <laughs> occasional TED Talk to a truly curious mindset. Your inquisitive pilgrimage will invariably lead you on a quest for answers. At some point in this journey, you'll begin to realize that the universe is knowable, not in a new age anthropomorphic personified way, but knowable in the sense that we can and are uncovering how it works. And science is the method for how we investigate its inner workings. Like reverse engineering of foreign contraption, science asks how and then sets about to find out. In neuroscience, you realize that seizures, sleep paralysis, and schizophrenia have oh. chemical causes and aren't demon possession. Studying biology, oh. genetics, and biochemistry, you'll learn how we know that all animals are related and that we're animals, that life is nothing more than chemistry, and oh. that it can arise from non-life naturally. Anthropology, dendrochronology, oh. and geology will show you how we know that the Earth is far older than most ancient religions could even fathom. Cracking into physics, you'll discover how particles pop into and out of existence ex nihilo from nothing. And observe oh how entire stars and planets can form entirely on their own. The more you fill in your gaps of understanding, the less room is left for magical supernatural forces. And as more and more of your supernatural beliefs fade into your cognitive graveyard of scientifically illiterate misconceptions, you'll realize how many times you've been wrong with the assertion, we don't know, therefore, God, as your placeholder for ignorance. Become conscious. Uh. Oh, oh please, please make it stop. All right, hold on. Do, do, I, do, you, I, do you know how I, freakishly I, or oh, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Do you know how freakishly Orwellian that sounded? Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like god. and not to mention that all the patterns are just so cringy. All I have to say is this, right? Uh okay. Raise your hand if you want to talk. We are not supposed to have eight people in here. Say something in the chat and say you want to chat because I'm the crosstalk is getting too much. One of the things that really got me about this, this one little segment by Holy Kool-Aid here 
probably deserves an entire response video alone. He's made a number of claims that are pseudoscientific claims that should be challenged. And he, uh, you know, uh, citation needed on a whole bunch of these. Uh, he's made a bunch of assertions that are not scientific. They are faith assertions, um, amongst other things. Um, it's also a continuation of that ridiculous notion that uh, 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 somehow belief that an intelligence is driving the universe and making it all go the way it goes is in no way compatible with anything you've said. Although, by the way, there's no evidence for your ludicrous proposition that uh, mental processes are merely chemical. No scientific mm -hmm. evidence for that at all. Back that up. Really, your mind is entirely a product of electrochemical processes. Sh please present the peer-reviewed studies that show this. You can't. They don't exist. In fact, the more we learn about human cognition, the more we learn that that is impossible and that, and that it's a, fa a faith-based proposition with no evidence behind it. Um, and this is true of a lot of the things. I can make a list of all the wrong things he just said. If somebody wants to talk, let's have John Baptiste go first. Okay. Um, Holy Kool-Aid comes, it, it comes from evangelical Christianity. He, he has said so before in other videos. Um, he, so he, he comes from, he comes from the, this, this topic as, as science is bad, but that's not how Christians see science. Um, science is, is explaining how God did things and maybe, you know, and maybe some, some, some things that, that it, it helps to uh, broaden our, our perspective. It's not just, you know, therefore God. It's God did this. How did God do this? Um, that, that's how a lot of scientists uh, actually see it. Muslim, Jewish, Christian. Um, they don't compartmentalize their belief. They're like, this is, this is God's work. What is God doing in, in this instance? And, you know, ha they, they work back. They, you know, that's what science is. Um, yep. Like you were saying before, Max, he 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 talked he talked about the electrochemical um, chemical parts. We that's do true. know that schizophrenia is not caused by electrochemistry, chemi but there's also there's also a uh, physical component to that because a, a schizophrenic's brain looks different, has different connections. It it there's a there's difference in the f physical. Uh, in the physical brain from normal brains. Um, so it's not just chem the chemical processes and the whole chemical processes thing comes from uh, uh, Freud, which his entire, all of his teachings were debunked. So, you know, it, that goes along with the chemical processes thing. That's the last thing of Freud's that is actually still seen as credible. Yeah. All right, Billy the Conqueror, you, sir. Really? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I had, I thought, sorry, I was waiting for you to unmute me, but I unmuted myself anyway. Um, anyway, what I was saying, what I, I guess what I want to say is that, see, this, this kind of once again goes back to the whole, like, the fact that he's coming at it from, it seems like an anti-evangelical side of it, in yep. that he doesn't seem to realize that there are a lot of Christians that definitely believe and follow the scientific method. It's like with the Catholic church, when it comes to like, say demonic possession, they have to be very thorough in investigating the cases to make sure that the person isn't just suffering from an average mental illness. And then it's actually possessed by like an evil spirit. You know, like they have to compile evidence before they can do anything since the process of exercising a person is, um, sorry, is a very dangerous one to partake. But these like these atheists tend to act like like basically if they can't explain it, it must be a demonic possession. Therefore, we're just going to throw around an exorcism at random, which is stupid because that's not really knowing the minor details of how exorcisms work and how dangerous it is for both the person gaining exorcism as well as the person performing the rites and ritual to the whole practice. Yeah, uh, just to add to that, um, I can show you in the uh, uh, uh literature going back many centuries that exorcists have known that some cases of demonic possession, maybe many or most of them, are not actually demonic, that the person is just mentally ill or delusional. That's something professional trained exorcists in a trained organized religion will, will tell you and have been telling you, saying for thousands of uh, centuries. Everybody knows some people are just crazy. So I'm sorry, it's false to suggest it's 
otherwise. Um, uh, Cromwell, what did you have to say, sir? I'll unmute you. Uh, all I have to say is um, when he pretty much puts such a space based assertion of science, it pretty much says, well, <laughs> science is not set in stone because guess what? I think I've mentioned this before that um, the science of science of 100 years ago has been pretty much been debunked today. And the science of today may be debunked in about another decade or so. Hell, we just recently discovered quantum physics. So the idea that there might be an other world. Is that music going there, on? Uh, Cross talk, guys. Okay. Did you make your point? It sounds like you did. All right. Next is Robert. What do you got, Mr. Comrade Dimitri? Laser? What the fuck? Oh, yeah, sorry. What the hell was that? All right. Yeah, that was deflating, it's your turn. Well, I, I think that was music. You have to be careful about that. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, Again, he's he's he just seems like a very presumptuous atheist who, who makes these wild assertions about what what religious people's thought processes must be that that are of course completely inaccurate. Uh, you guys are saying that he's coming at this from an evangelical or whatever perspective. I don't know. To me, he just seems like a, a very presumptuous atheist. Uh, he says that uh, thanks to science, we know that the the universe is knowable. And yes, the universe is knowable. And what motivated uh, the first scientists? To believe that the that the laws of the universe were intelligible was their belief that that the universe was created by an intelligence. It was created by an intelligence, therefore its operation should be intelligible. Uh, another thing, just to go into something specifically, he said that uh, I mean we could do this all day. Is uh, you know uh, particle physics shows us how particles can come into and out of existence ex nihilo. Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, virtual particles. Uh, come from a pre-existing set of, of natural laws and, and from a, a quantum vacuum. Uh, neither of those things are nothing. So uh, uh, there are some other things I probably wanted to say, but that's all That's all what's coming to mind right now. It was and a, from my Robert, experience, it's not the how, it's the why. That's right. All right, Robert, uh, uh, Dimitri, did you want to get your point in? Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Um... I was going to mention that um, there's two scientists um, I can think of um, off the top of my head that, that really blow this guy's argument out of the water, and that's um, George's Lamatra and um, Gregor Mendel. Oh, they did far more for um, foreign science than this guy ever did or will do. Please also add Louis Pasteur, um, who gave us the germ theory of modern medicine. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, please prove your extraordinary claim without invoking a pseudoscientist like Lawrence Krauss, but that's what he is, a pseudoscientist. Please prove your extraordinary claim with peer-reviewed studies that I may examine to prove your claim that abiogenesis exists. It might. I'm not saying it would threaten my worldview if it does, but I don't believe you. Um, so I want to see if it does. Um, and the claim that yeah. particles come into, into and out of existence ex nihilo is simply a lie that Lawrence Krauss told. You will find his fellow physicists uh, think he's full of crap. So where did you get that assertion, sir, except from a known pseudoscientist and bully, by the way, Lawrence Krauss? Um, where did you get any of this? And why should we believe you? These appear to be among your many faith assertions that you cannot back up with any actual science. A quantum wave function is not nothing. A quantum wave function is not nothing. That's exactly right. And no, particles do not pop in and out of existence at random. No, I'm sorry. There's more to the quantum physics than that. I'll bring one of my quantum physicist friends here. By the way, did you know that a majority at this point of all, and it's 2018, the majority of Nobel Prize winners in physics who are alive today are Christians, and most of them will tell you that, that their religious views help them in their work, just like it helped the guy, George Lemaitre, who gave you the Big Bang Theory, just like his religious views helped Louis Pasteur give us the jury theory of medicine, just as Gregor Mendel's, and Mendel's entire life gave us genetics. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry, it, this is another case of atheists also sawing off the uh, serial numbers and claiming ideas for their cause, their ideology, their movement that they don't deserve. Um, sorry, atheists did not give us Big Bang. In fact, the guy who gave us that was a Christian. Atheists did not give us quantum physics. I don't think any of the early quantum physicists were, 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 were uh, Christians, but none of them were atheists, and most of them found atheists odd and uh, uh, even repulsive. Einstein also found atheism ridiculous. Can you at least admit that these are true or um, uh, repeat from your talking points some more? 
All right, let's let's. Uh, he made so many assertions there. Uh, but uh, pr pr pragmatic wants to talk next. All right, pragmatic. Um, we'll let you in, and then we got to keep going. Um, go ahead, man. Oh yeah, no. First and foremost, I just uh, want to mention empiricists should be burnt at the stake. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, I've spoken with this guy uh, a little bit before, and it uh, specifically on the topics he comes down to, uh, like he mentions demonic possession in here because he's some sort of psychological counselor or something who works with this kind of thing. When I spoke with him about specific incidents about uh, people literally throwing up jars upon jars of of nails. And things like that, or if, you know, this girl is like, not literally turning her head, but speaking in tongues or crap like that, you know, he's willing to chalk that up to like some kind of chance that, oh, maybe she just swallowed a whole bunch of nails beforehand, or, oh, maybe she just learned these languages or things like that. And like, he's willing to take like, all these extremely unlikely instances over the chance that, you know, so that, you know, there are evil spiritual forces in the world that can actually physically manifest in this world. And, you know, it's something that, you know, he'll just deny right out of the gate. But he's willing to believe that, you know, some girl just swallows like pounds upon pounds of, pounds of nail to throw up in the face of some priest or happen to be learning some language uh, or some, some dead language that nobody else knew she was learning as she was going through this process. So he's willing, you know, to dismiss you know, a very reasonable possibility that's been historically documented for the sake of like these weird sort of like, uh, I don't know, people who just go out on these weird binges that somehow don't harm them up until the point that the priest begins the exorcism. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very odd and sort of cherry picked worldview of how, you know, the spiritual interacts with the physical and how, you know, if you just have this empiricist view of the world and this sort of fetishization of science, you don't actually, uh, you know, get the whole picture. You end up being more narrowly grounded than anything. Yeah, I'm going to only just repeat what I've mentioned. You can look for an article called, as a psychiatrist, I diagnose mental <laughs> illness. Also, I help spot demonic possession by a professor at a New York university. Um, uh, 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 Richard Gallagher, a professor of psychiatry and everything, who works regularly with exorcists. And exorcists will tell you they work with psychologists and psychiatrists all the time. And that's because there's ample and abundant evidence available that the demonic is real and that you can't treat it all with psychology or chemistry. We have evidence of that. If you think that we, that, that if you auto dismiss all of that, you're not being scientific or rational, sir. In fact, you may be abusing your pay the people you're trying to help. I'm just saying. And, uh, and I, 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 as a guy who loves science and history, that's why I'm not an atheist. Yeah, yes, uh, same I, here. yeah, same here. I love science so much. The Christian world gave you science and, and, and did not have to overcome science. I'm sorry. Um, the, the beliefs of Christians about how the universe works form the basis of modern science, and you wouldn't be able to do it without us. Well, maybe the Muslims also, would. Also, as for galaxies forming on their own, how is that an issue? Yeah, I don't, they don't actually, nothing actually forms on its own because the universe, you know, we have so much, it's like, yes, there's natural processes. Something is driving those natural processes. It's entirely rational to think of God is doing that. Your imagination is very limited if you can't say otherwise. Okay, who has anything else they want to say before we keep going? And, and I just want to underline the point that when we discover that the universe observes uh, elegant natural laws, that gives us cause for theism, not atheism. All right, we're going to move on. I'm going to we'll probably play a little more than Holy Kool-Aid, but I don't know. That little segment where he packed in so many assertions, we could spend an hour debunking almost everything he said. I'm sorry, guys, but if you're part of the atheist fold and you're all excited and you think you're going to be into science now and you're going to be a scientist and all that, learn some skepticism and get skepticism of guys like this because this man has just misrepresented numerous areas of science at once for you, and he's misrepresented those sciences just so he can continue to defend. His uh, also, also, it's a complaint. I'm sorry, I, I just mute. I was just muting people. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Or should we just keep going? All right, we're just going to keep it's going. Based on the complexity of life and how humans evolved to the point where we built pyramids and all these great cities and technology to point where we're talking on the internet and you'd think that's just chemistry. 
Yeah, really. And why does the chemistry work that way? Well, we don't know. By the way, you'll find atheists says we don't know. Atheists say we don't know or we have no way of knowing more often than any religious person I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. Well, but, like, uh, we, we don't know, but it wasn't God. How is that any better than, oh, uh, I don't know. Therefore, God did it. Well, hold on. That's 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 the other point I want to bring up just real quickly. They think that what we're saying is we don't know, therefore God, when that's absolutely not what we're saying. What we say is we don't know for certain, but we have good reason to believe it is God. And they think we're saying we don't know, but we therefore God. But when in reality we're saying no, we have not absolute certainty, but we have a good degree of certainty to believe that this thing is the cause of, uh, was caused by some immovable mover, to put it in Thomistic terms and things like that. It's not that we don't know, and therefore we're just assuming God, we have reason to believe it's God in the first place. It was evolutionary biology that convinced me that religion had to be important and real and healthy and normal in humans, and that it would be bizarre to re reject it. Just for example, I love science. I've read Richard Feynman. I've read actual stuff written by Einstein. I've read uh, the quantum physics. I've read so many science books, it's ridiculous. Um, the claim that somehow being interested in science uh, will make you more likely to be an atheist is just a lie. Most, I'm sorry, but uh, it's even propaganda. The Atheist Cult Network spreads propaganda saying most scientists are atheists, and that's a lie too. Although it is true, I'm gonna move on. I meant to mention this before. There, are, there is a high correlation with atheists um, with fatherlessness or broken homes and autism. Um, large numbers of atheists are autists. Um, it is known that autists are something like eight to 10 more like, times more likely to be atheists than the general population. And I think that's because uh, it's easy to uh, take that literal mindedness of autists and their tendency to uh, hyper focus on something and simply channel it and fool them. This is still the majority of autists are not uh, atheists. And uh, if you're autistic, one of them. struggling with this, I'll, I'll help you cure your, of your atheism because atheism is an irrational position to take, just in case you're wondering. All right, let's keep going. Let's see if we can get this done. Perhaps we can find out um, together. No. Find out together. You don't want to find out with anybody who rejects your atheist worldview, sir. All right, any <laughs> so, you, want to, you want to prove religion true and use science to do it. You're on a journey to prove your religious belief true with empirical evidence. Like Luke in the cave on Dagobah, such a path has only what you take with you. Bring any presuppositions, nostalgia, traditions, or a desired outcome, and you bypass intellectual honesty for a home in self-delusion. Remember, on this journey, your holy book is not your guide, not your map. You're trying to recreate the puzzle that is your faith without using the picture on the box. Start with corner pieces. Who wrote your holy book? And when? What does it really say? Can you arrive at these conclusions using only evidence, not faith? Oh. Next, fit in the pieces of science, history, philosophy, ethics. Wherever the journey of evidence takes you, that's where your home is, even if your faith couldn't come along. And there we see a repetition oh, of... What game was that? Take turns, guys. Raise your hands if you want to talk. Um, let, me, let me make my point. Paul, um, the problem is, is that your atheist worldview is entirely presuppositional. Um, and it's dishonest of you to suggest that it's not presuppositional. We have had evidence all along without any holy books at all that there has to be a God and that there may that there almost certainly is an afterlife. We've had it for thousands of years. It's normal to think these things. There is evidence for all of these things, including now contemporary science evidence in multiple areas, uh, which your girlfriend, uh, uh, by the way, uh, completely misrepresented in many ways. Um, the truth of the matter is, uh, I declared, I decided there was a God after a long search led me to believe there had to be one based on the massive evidence that was before me. Um, also, Paul, I will tell you that most Christians do not start by just reading. In fact, most religious people do not start by just reading their religious texts. There's more to it than that. You appear to come from a very primitive fundamentalist background and not be very well educated on religion. And what this does is actually makes you shallow. It makes you ill-informed, and while you tend to be a kind of a nice guy, friendly personally, it makes you obnoxious and condescending to those who come to different conclusions about the world from you. I suggest you start talking to some people who can actually answer some of these odd assertions that you make. Uh, most humans come to the conclusion that there's a God on their own, naturally, biologically, organically, 
We know this to be a fact. Your atheist position is a minority position amongst, among humans. It's not a natural, normal position, and it's not the default rational position. You've just decided it is, and you've joined a cult movement that also pays you money um, to make you act like, you know, tell yourself that you're more rational than the rest of us. I suggest you actually learn something about religion. You don't know much about it, except apparently you've read a lot of Bible, and you grew up in some people who, among people who have a, a very wooden, and primitive view of it. Well, I'm sorry, it's on you to investigate the smarter people. By the way, Paul, please notice all the pseudoscience that flies around your community. Your community uh, makes scientific claims it can't back up all the time. I suggest you start examining them and pitch away your own holy books. And of course, I mean, I saw recently he commented that if you, you know, come to YouTube to, to learn more. Also, Paul, you are a very faith-based man. Your faith in science is ridiculous. Uh, okay, who else wants to talk? Billy? Oh, Cromwell. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to go back. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, go ahead, sir. Jean-Baptiste? Yeah, um, what, what he was going at what, was everything that he, he actually said, I did, and where the path led me was Eastern Orthodoxy. Um... It, it, it's like who who wrote like who wrote the Bible? Well, what part of the Bible? The Old Testament was an oral Torah for we don't know we don't know how long, um, how long that oral Torah existed. We don't know at you know what point in time of over the hundred thousand years that are that the human race you know has been the human race um, that that was actually talking about. Like you know mo most of Genesis could have happened. You know, at any among any point in that hundred thousand year period, and then you know, and then later on it was written down because as as the more we got sophisticated with it, we we saw that oral tradition was good, but there were there were some things cropping up, you know, because kind of like the game of telephone, you you say one word and then whole bunch of other people hear that word and at the end it's going to sound differently um that's something that that did ha that did happen that's one of the reasons why it was written down and then you have uh the new testament new testament was written primarily by the apostles um it was again oral tradition it was mostly oral tradition before it was written down like the the uh there's some debate on how long that's been going on but you know the the people that actually wrote it down were not the apostles. That's what some people think. Um, then you have the the early church fathers, who really just took this whole mess this whole mess of of volumes of different writings, and you know sifted through it and made it you know intelligible. Because there there is a lot of things uh, with the early ch Christian church that you had heresies and whatnot. Um, which we could do a whole entire video on that. But you, you you go through the whole entire history, like you said, and you know, that to me that would either lead you to Catholicism or Eastern Orthodox. I uh yeah, our, our friends from the Sola Scriptura tradition, which is basically Protestant or Protestant derived, simply holds that they well, that we don't need the oral tradition anymore because they wrote down the Bible for us, so we don't need it. But the, the, the sad reality is the vast majority of the world's Christians have rejected that for 2,000 years. That's not why the Bible was compiled. Um, and uh, in defense, I'm going to move on to the next person in a second. In defense of oral tradition, it has been shown many times that oral traditions done right are at least are possibly more reliable than written. It depends on who's doing them and how they're doing them. Cromwell, you had something to say, sir? Uh, well, all I have to say is, with the fact that he basically, if you, if the fact that you're using uh, so empirical science to basically back up faith, um, much of the early scientists and the and the fathers of modern sciences were devout Christians, and so were even the Renaissance era uh, occultists as well. They were devout Christians, and they and the magic they did was Christian magic. Uh, trust me, for over two thousand years, Christianity was the dominant culture, and it helped fuel a lot of the a lot of the knowledge and all the philosophies. And up uh, and uh, Max, you pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, said a lot of things much better than I ever could. Oh well, thank you. All right, Billy, you had something you wanted to add before we move on? 
Yeah, so basically, you know, as you can tell by the clips that he's using from, like, say, Lord of the Rings, he's hinting at the fact that people go on a personal journey, and, he, and he's under the assertion that when people go on a journey for knowledge, they're going to abandon their faith, and they're going to leave behind, which is funny, because I'm actually an ex-atheist and progressive, and, you know, along my journey of, like, you know, being red-pilled, mainly due to online, like, you know, like uh, social media, because people act stupid on social media and stuff. You know, I found that actually, you know, I didn't really know too much about my Catholic faith, even though I was raised Catholic, you know, because my parents were not really devout. So, you know, after a while of like looking into the actual faith, I, you know, noticed that the faith is actually a very, is a much more complex and beautiful thing than people will let it on to be and stuff, because people don't really understand the faith and what they think they do. So this guy comes in with the pretense that once you finally like go on a journey of knowledge, you're basically going to give up on religion, which I think is a stupid assertion. Oh, it, it, it really is. It's a presupposition. I mean, I'm going to guess that this guy, like like more than nine out of 10 atheists, and that was me too, comes from a broken home, probably has conflicted uh, father issues, um, um, has a lot of deep-seated insecurities. Um, and I'm not picking on him. I'm just saying this is what is typical. This is the typical profile of an atheist who's not autistic. Um, and they're overwhelmingly male, by the way. Um, uh, authentic female atheists are as rare as hen's teeth. Um, and that's because atheism is more or less a hysterical reaction against the idea that maybe something is ultimately in charge of the universe and they just don't like the idea because it's a perfectly rational and well-evidenced view. Billy says he's got one more thing to say. Go ahead, Billy. Oh, yeah. The, one, well, the last thing I just want to say is that I think it's very ironic that he's using material from J.R.R. Tolkien when J.R.R. Tolkien was a devout Catholic. And the characters in Lord of the Rings do not, like, lose their faith even after their journey into the bigger world throughout the, like, the story of Lord of the Rings. That's right. And, and one last point I will make. Um, it is a lie to say that faith is belief without evidence. That is also a marker of the atheism cult movement that you joined, Paul. Um, just like terminology, they give you your own their own language. So they, the cult uses words its own way, like that creepy phrase deconvert, which is an instant proof that you've joined a cult, by the way. Um, um, similarly, um, Faith is not belief without evidence. Somebody claiming that faith is belief without evidence is making an ideological assertion that is not true. Most of us who are educated and mature and as scientifically rational as you at least um, view faith as um, uh, belief in an evidenced proposition that makes good sense until you've seen proof otherwise. Your faith, sir, is that, that that we live in a random, causeless universe that everything just sort of happens because it does randomly on its own. Um, that's a faith position. It's not a scientific one. And it's not something you would discover through evidence. It's just a presupposition you have. It's a faith position you have. Faith, and as a, is, not, as faith is, I'm going to get to you there, history. Faith is not. It is a lie, an abusive, bullying lie, actually, to a lot of us. I mean, maybe you got people in your circle who say you just have to have faith, and when they can't answer they, anything good for you, they say just have faith, just have faith. Well, I'm sorry if your parents or your family or whatever are like that. Go seek some smart people because faith is not belief without evidence. Faith is a, a, a it essentially for, for intelligent religious people goes to the word of trust. It basically means the same thing. Your trust. And if you use that word properly, you, sir, have trust in what you call science, misplaced in many ways, because while I love science, Christians gave you science, you're welcome, um, uh, we're really good at it too, um, but uh, no, your faith there is in what people say, that, you know, the scientists you believe you have faith in, that's all that's happening here. As Einstein said, uh, while religion without science is dangerous, science without religion is lame. Science without religion is dangerous, and he should have noticed that too, but he probably hadn't noticed that at that point. And, sci and science is the, in, in, in of itself is the slow revelation of God's blueprint. That's exactly how most intelligent Christians look at it. It's why we're so good at science. In fact, a lot of us are way better than you. Um, that's just sort of the ideological bigotry you accept when you join this atheism cult movement. By the way, again, all, not all atheists are part of the cult movement, but all this presuppositional language, 
this condescending mm -hmm. language, this twisting of what other people mean and putting it on them. Um, yeah, that, that's a cult movement. All right, All right there, we got two more. Yep, here we go. Um, number six, oh. you know your faith foundation is only good enough for you. Oh. You acknowledge. Oh, you got on mute. They come. I believed it with all of my heart, and it was the core thing about me. It was the center of my personality. And at a certain point, between being totally religious and atheist, I realized that the reasons why I believed those things that I felt were what atheists often refer to as anecdotal evidence. Oh. These were personal experiences that I had identified as religious experiences because of influence of other people's stories. I, I took what I had heard. But on mute. This was the same I came to. Growing up religious, I thought I felt the Holy Ghost. And that was certainly the thing that stuck out the most to me, that I had had witness born to me. And then the day came when I couldn't explain a lot of the things that I admitted were inconsistent and seemed strange about a world with a loving God, but I just knew it was the case. And this was one of my steps toward losing my religion. Losing my religion. When I finally realized my reasons for believing weren't good enough for anybody besides me. And finally, the day came where I had to acknowledge that the reasons why I believed were really only good reasons for me, or at least I thought so at the time. Okay, deflating is next, but I'm just going to say, sir, so you left Mormonism, which is a fringe minority group. I'm sorry, it is. I, I have Mormon friends, and, 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 and Mormonism is well known for giving people real grief for asking hard questions. Did it ever occur to you for a second to say, you know what, I'm going to look at some other religions to see if they have any truth in them, or if other religions may have evidence that my religious group can't really offer, that maybe there's somebody smart out there? You, you joined another religion, sir. You did. Deflating atheism. Go ahead. I only have the observation that it is highly ironic that he said that when he was a Christian, uh, his Christianity defined his personality, but now he calls himself Mr. Atheist. Uh, I, I thought that was very ironic. Uh, he sang uh, Losing My Religion incorrectly, and uh, basically, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't see what his point was here. It'd be nice if he did that. Um that I'm um, uh, part from a Tupac song, uh, Gangster Party, Losing My Religion, and all that. Yeah, okay, so basically, I grew up Mormon and decided that I didn't believe it, and therefore I decided all other religions are false. Nice and fair. Um, Cromwell, your turn, sir. Uh, the fact is, uh, okay, so the idea that you can't lose or some of my mystical experience, um, you can't really completely dismiss the supernatural in your whole experience. And this is coming from a guy who grew up where the supernatural was practically an accepted belief for over 20 years in my mom's rural community. And I got to say, man, every, I like, like the one I moment left the Catholic faith, I never really forgo religion entirely. It's just that I, I was, I was sort of on the spiritual quest, trying to discover myself and discovering what is it I believe in? How do I, how, what are, what can I take in from my beliefs? What can I learn from these experiences? And then use that as a foundation to push for, to push forward and to uh, see life as it is. I even taken up uh, some uh, some Eastern philosophical outlooks, and I've also been studying um, from traditional from traditionalist authors as well. So I, I'm, I'm it's like I'm constantly learning new things, and and the uh, and my spiritual journey never ends, not even after I die. <laughs> there you go. All right, pragmatic culture. Yeah, uh, just one thing on the on the last little segment, real quick. Uh, the burnt empiricist at the stake statement goes for him just as much because again, it's this whole notion that, Oh, you can prove God through science. You can prove him empirically. I mean, there might be little bits of evidence for that, but obviously the, uh, the meat of it, the argument has always been, uh, in terms of philosophy, but to get to what Jimmy said, and I, I like Jimmy, I've spoken with him on non sequitur, uh, a couple times before he's nice, but I think what he's forgetting here is that, Anecdotal evidence, which is essentially what he's describing as his experience, is still a valid form of evidence. It's yep. just that you have to be careful how you use it. For example, if you're trying to dismiss a rule that's like, oh, all X are Y, and you say, well, I found an X that isn't Y, 
well, then that disproves that rule. But if you're just describing sort of a uh, trend kind of, and I and you say on average X is Y, and you say, well, I found an X that isn't Y, that doesn't disprove the trend. So it's all about how you use the anecdotal evidence. And I don't think individual spiritual experience and, you know, sort of proofs that are only good enough for you ought to be discounted because it's still a valid form of evidence just because you can't use it in the broad base of argumentation doesn't make it any less valid. So you can, uh, there's a great, I, I think it's C.S. Lewis. I can't think of the entire thing off the head, but it's like a spiritual experience is good for, you know, your personal belief, but to guide yourself through the greater uh, depths of spiritual living and stuff, you need sort of, uh, you, know, you, need, you need a religion. You know, if you have a spiritual experience, it's sort of like you're on a boat in an ocean, but to guide yourself through that ocean, you need the map that is religion. And so I don't think to, you know, to dismiss spiritual experience, I think is very wrong. And I think it's completely valid to believe in not only religion, but in a higher power, simply based on personal experience. I don't think that's, I don't think there's any less validity in that than believing in it because, you know, you read some Thomas Aquinas. Agreed. You do not get to declare something false merely because it is anecdotal. You really don't. And that's another thing they do in, when you join the atheism cult ideology movement. Um, just, just assert, well, that's anecdotal, so we can dismiss it. No, you don't get to dismiss anecdotes. You really don't. Um, especially in, in terms of spiritual experiences. We've had people who've done study, scientific studies on those, by the way, and shown remarkably consistent uh, results across cultures and across the centuries, globally and across religions that are remarkably consistent and are not consistent with any so-called so scientific proposition that it's all electrochemistry. Jean-Baptiste, uh, uh, Jean you wanted to say something? Well, yes. Um, the, the first thing is it, it is of my opinion and not of anybody else on the team as far as I know, but it is my opinion that you were never a Christian, Mr. Atheist. You were a Mormon. There is a difference. There is a difference. Not just because it, it, it's not, you know, whether or not you believe in Jesus Christ. There's other things that you have to believe in to be considered Christian by mainstream Christianity. But the major thing why people do not think Mormons are Christians is because you have to to believe Joseph Smith was a prophet in order to be a Mormon. You know, where, whereas every other mainstream Christian denomination, you have to believe in uh, in Jesus, and there's there's no there's no extra prophet um, that you have to believe in. You have to believe in the articles of faith of, of each denomination, but they're they're pretty much the same, with the exception of the Orthodox, which you know the we could go into a whole another video on that but um there, there's that and i'm sure other people will, will will disagree on me with me on that but that that's my reasoning for that and the second thing with with the ane anecdotal of evidence in the real world you can get somebody in legal trouble with anecdotal evidence that's enough of a truth to get somebody's life and career ruined um take brett kavanaugh for example um and and you know it, it holds up in a court of law um anecdotal evidence from a victim does hold up in, in the court of law um uh, eyewitness accounts also um also does hold up in a court of law so it, it's everywhere else in in society sees anecdotal evidence as something that you know should be at least considered and it, 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 it is used in ways that can damage or not damage. It can bring justice or it can bring injustice. It, it, it's a two-edged edged sword on that. You know, what, 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 what another word for anecdote, by the way, is data point. Point from which you might be able to start uh, gathering more information to see that if you can find replication of this and other experiences like this and so on. It is totally unscientific to simply assert that an anecdote is not evidence. Sorry, but it is. Um, it depends on what you're up to. Uh, Billy the Conqueror, you wanted to get in? Uh, yes. Okay. So my comment on this is that it seems like this once again plays into the very classic atheist argument of using, you know, a specific instance in their life or someone else's life 
of religious people making you feel like ignorant or being selfish or whatever they want to call it. Like they, they want to take the, uh, what's the word they want to take the supposed selfless stance by embracing atheism, saying they're going to make society a better place. But in fact, it comes from a very selfish perspective. You know, they don't, they just lack understanding of the finer, more subtle aspects to Christianity and faith as a whole and how it, how it affects cultural development as well as you know how different civilizations will like how different civilizations will grow during their lifespan yeah fair enough deflating uh yeah i just think it's funny how how atheists kind of uh preach free thinking but then you find that they put all these sorts of restrictions on free thinking it's like if, if i want to use my own experiences uh to form my judgments uh i should be able to do so but uh, the further irony is that is that uh, it's kind of self defeating to to argue against a, per, uh, a person using experiential evidence because even matters of consensus get filtered uh, to us through our own experience. So you can't just tell a person, "Oh, uh, uh, discount your own experience." You only have to believe what what is believed by the consensus, and that's not free thinking in any case. Nope. The atheist movement is more defined than anything else by the thoughts they will not allow you to entertain. And by the way, I'll repeat, Billy, these people will throw you out and shun you just like the Mormons did if you go too far off the reservation in the beliefs that you are faithfully repeating here. I mean, I know you drew some of these conclusions on your own based on the odd idea that there's no God. I also would, uh, again, throw in I, I, apologies to any Mormon friends. I have deep Mormon friends I, 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 I really respect and have done a lot for me. They know we have differences. The vast majority of Christians, even the ones who don't agree with each other, like the vast majority of Protestants acknowledge that Catholics and Eastern Orthodox and all of those are Christians. Eastern Orthodox and Catholics will recognize that all these other groups are Christians. The vast majority of all Christian denominations, even the ones that fight with each other, do not consider Mormonism legitimate Christianity. Uh, and it's because they're anti-Trinitarian. They have quite a few other beliefs. Um, there's also historical claims that they make about a great apostasy that history, you know, it's a very questionable proposition. Joseph Smith is questionable. The, the, I mean, I'm sorry, but it is a huge leap to go from, I don't believe Mormonism, therefore atheist. I'm sorry, son. It doesn't make sense to go that far. Joseph, Joseph Smith wanted to sleep with a bunch of women. <laughs> dude, I know that. dude, I'm telling you, uh, Hinduism makes more sense than Mormonism to me. Um, Buddhism makes more sense than Mormonism to me. Go look at those. Yeah, because one reason why is because Hinduism and Buddhism are much older than Mormonism, and there is a much more clear hierarchy. I, for uh, for many other things, See, that and and Smith was a convicted fraud. Yeah, that's true as well. Go into all that. I know Mormons might want to defend some of that, but the bottom line is, no, I'm sorry, you're in a religion that even most Christians say isn't Christian. That it's odd. I know Mormons struggle for acceptance, but guys, I'm sorry, the great apostasy didn't happen. And and uh, the true God is one, and he expresses in three forms, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in three persons, I mean. Speak, uh, speaking of which, he thought he felt the Holy Spirit. Well, he thought he felt, how does he know he didn't? There's the thing. How does he know he didn't? He, okay, he, he is I, I, uh, the, uh, down to psychology and dopamine rush. I, I'm guessing that he's choosing to think that what happened to him was indeed all psychology, uh, some kind of temporary hallucination, a dopamine rush, a, 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 a pleasure response, and, and he has decided he can uh, put all his experiences down to that, even though, by the way, that is also not a scientific belief, it's just a belief. Just pointing it out to you. All right, keep going, we're almost done. Or at least I thought so at the time. Number seven, you're a little obsessed with debating atheists. Uh, I spend a little too much time debating atheists. Once trivial and routine things such as scrolling through your social media newsfeed have now become an obsessive hunt for someone or something that you disagree with. People who are confident in their belief or who have no doubt in their faith don't pay any attention to anything atheists have to say. I'm um, sorry. These conversations trigger you. Now, why is that? Well, if we're 100% honest with each other, it's because you have doubts too. And that's okay. Our brains are hardwired to be curious, 
to ask questions and to seek the answers to those questions. Religion tries to extinguish those sparks you instead liar. dampening it with verses from ancient books telling you to trust and obey and that faith is all that you need. When you confront us, uh -huh. you're really confronting yourself. When you demand that we give you evidence that there is no God, you're really just grasping at evidence for your own. Uh. When you try to convince us to believe, you're really just trying to convince yourself. Hearing us talk about being skeptical, <clears throat> asking questions, pointing out contradictions, that's like pouring gas on that mind. We engage you because we see those sparks, curiosity, and doubt. We are not your enemy. You're Instead, a, think you of us our self -declared like enemy. a flint. We engage your arguments, waiting, hoping for that one strike that sends a spark into that curiosity and doubt, igniting the flames that burn away that barricade that religion has put up, freeing you to finally seek the answers to the questions that you have and not some ancient book. Thank you. Thank you for the horrible condescension there, Kyle. I used to say nice things about Kyle, but I'm going to repeat my, my opinion that he's a horrible bigot who lies a lot. Um, and he'll just, he's just going to have to take that. I'm, I, I am appalled by uh, some of the things I've seen go on at NSS. I'm sorry, Kyle, everything you just said may, would apply to you. I'm going to try and say, as, again, I'm, I'm doing less of the yelling, less of the swearing. I'm not going to back down from every, any of what I've said about your personality and what you're saying here, though. Um, the reason that we respond to your videos, sir, is because you lie about us all the time. One of your favorite lies that some of the others in your little cult network keeps repeating somehow is that religion is what's the cause of homophobia, even though we have copious science to debunk that, and we have copious evidence of all the religious people that were absolutely crucial to making gay rights even a thing. Um, uh, so you're a bigot already, not acknowledging the huge debt you owe to Christians for the gay rights movement, um, and you owe Christians an apology for your continued pseudoscientific bigoted assertion that homophobia is caused by religion. It is not, sir. Stop saying that. And one of the reasons this channel exists is not because I ever wanted to argue with atheists, because, but because other members of your collective were attacking me and were attacking my friends obsessively, nonstop, saw it happening with complete strangers. And your group puts out lie after lie about history. Your group, you, sir, you and your friends uh, put out fake science. You put out fake history. And when we challenge you on your fake science, and we challenge you on your fake history, and we, we challenge you on the gross generalizations you make, and the way you infantilize and demonize people, and you sit around with and make friends with people who say they're going to destroy religion and, and, and defeat religion, meaning what? Well, how am I supposed to take that as a Christian and a father? What are you going to do to me and my child, sir? I mean, you've got some friends who apparently think I abuse my child simply for teaching him to defend himself from atheist bullies. Atheist bullies who tell lies. Here's an example of some of the lies you tell. There's no evidence of God. There's no evidence of an afterlife. There's no evidence Jesus was real. There's no evidence. That all, all Religion is brainwashing. But to, to, be, to, be, to be fair, he doesn't find mythicism convincing. Well, I'm Yeah, not, and he has corrected some bad atheist history before by inviting Tim O'Neill, so... Well, yeah, he, but there's other things he won't correct, and they won't correct. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and seriously, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to let other people talk in a minute. Only the most vile bigot on the planet suggests that it's child abuse to teach a child about God in her afterlife. And only a, 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 a filthy bigot suge suggests that somehow religious people should not be fully and completely and in all ways at every level of public policy allowed to advocate for what they believe for whatever reason they want to. You guys are totalitarians, you and, S and Shannon and all you guys. You want to uh, prevent us from creating communities and laws that match values that make sense to us. You want to impose your own agenda, and then you like to claim you have no agenda, just like you like to claim you have no beliefs, even though you have belief after belief after belief you cannot defend, sir. You are an ideologue surrounded by cultists. 
Um, let's see, who's next? Who did I miss? Uh, 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 how bad do we need to scroll back? Um, start over. Who wants to talk right now? Well, I just want to say this is the atheist favorite game of, of armchair pseudo-psychology, that they know our thought processes, and they know us better than we know ourselves, and that we can see. Uh, it's kind of like those polls that's saying, you know, the Democrats are going to win. It's just like you try to plant the suggestion the wave. into a person's mind so it, it becomes a reality. Uh, so this is, uh, this is, again, there has not been a, a, a single fact of science in this entire video. There's not been an entire, a single logical argument in this entire video. We've been shown nothing that would, that would shows that any of these things compel anyone towards atheism. Uh, I will speak from my own experience here. Why, why did I start deflating atheism? I did not go on the internet uh, in, in the 90s with the, with, with the hope of being, life defender, of being a defender of my faith. Okay, That would have been the weirdest, strangest thing you could have told me at the time. Because if you know me like through my personal Facebook page... You know, I like just like telling dirty jokes and sharing pictures of cute kittens. And I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't have that as my objective on the internet is to win people for Christ. That was never the objective. I'm just kind of really just a regular guy as, as, as far as that goes. What really started bothering me about 10 years ago is that I witnessed the abusive behavior of atheists on the internet. I saw how they were dogpiling good religious people and that they had these set of uh, these little set of stock expressions and talking points that they would repeat ad nauseum and that they were making re they were making a religious discussion on the internet impossible and they were just making it really really stupid they were really dragging down the level of discussion where somebody could not even, you know, uh, post a link to like a National Geographic article about about the life of Jesus without these uh, herpty derps spamming their their invisible sky fairy memes into the comments section. I remember those days too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it really started pissing me off, and that's that's what urged me to start. By the way, I, I don't seek out these debates. They find me these days often enough. So I have to go out there and debate atheists because they find their way to me now. <laughs> and I barely even want that to happen. But yeah, that's why that's why I started tackling uh, atheists on the internet. Not because you planted some seeds of doubt in my mind. I am more convinced of the existence of God, of, of God now than I was 10 years ago. Certainly more than I was 20 years ago. So poof goes that. Okay, everybody, ra oh, we're starting over. So raise your hand if you want to talk. I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes to uh, underline what deflating this said there. Raise your hand now if you want to talk otherwise, because I want to give my own person. I mentioned it already, dude. I was viciously, filthily attacked by atheists. One of the th it was one of the main things that got me to uh, question my own atheism more than 10 years ago when I was dogpiled on by a bunch of filthy, nasty, hateful, disgusting, lying atheists, some of whom your friend Steve McCray still re references some of the lies they've told me about. Doesn't bother to check with me whether the lies he says about me are actually true or not. Um, I think of him as McKKK at this point because his Catholic hating is beyond belief. You are hanging out with a horrific bigot there who marginalizes, mocks, and makes fun of or just dismisses sex abuse victims. He only cares about sex abuse victims from Catholic clergy and nobody else. Even though those of us who were sexually abused, Kyle, I'm talking to you as a survivor here, um, uh, uh, we are much more likely to be raped as children by school teachers, by prison guards, by foster care workers, by juvenile home facilities, and by school teachers than we are by priests, both in raw numbers and statistics. I was molested, sir, um, by a, a, a Chicago public school teacher whose wife was a Chicago cop and who's one, one of his buddies in their pedo network worked for the Chicago Transit Authority, IK the bus and the train stations. This is the main vector through which child rape happens. And your friend, Mr. Steve McKKK there, calls that whataboutism. In other words, I'm nothing to him. And if my child were raped by his teacher, my child would be nothing to him. 
Um, and he doesn't care about any child who's been raped unless it was raped by a Catholic priest. And he doesn't care about all the innocent priests. He does appear to think it's okay to abuse Catholics. Um, just like most of your friends regularly abuse Christians with lies about our history, lies about what we believe, lies about what we're about. You know, I was pro-gay rights going all the way back to the 90s, and I never stopped being. And only when the atheist fat got collected did I all of a sudden get called a homophobe. I, it's really hard for me not to scream F you at that for my decades of advocacy and my decades of friendship with gay people, only to have them turn around. And my decades of watching as Christians were recruited and, and told and, and convinced to support gay rights. Gay rights would never have happened without Christian help. Uh, and we get no thanks from you. We get lies and we get you lying and pretending that homophobia is caused by Christians, even though we have copious science showing that's not, that's a lie. Sir, I'm sorry. Um, uh, your condescension and your kindly demeanor, which you share with, with some of the others in your group, doesn't hide the fact that you are a disgusting bigot. Anybody else got anything to say? Let's see. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, go ahead. Well... See, he, he's completely wrong. His whole entire his whole entire presupposition here is completely wrong. Um, most most people who who argue with atheists on the internet do so because they're wrong. There's there's things that they're wrong about. The the whole religion is 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 you know um, squelches the the imagination and thinking process. No. No, you go through Christianity in the right paces. You know, there's there's a structure you do it that's not oppressive. It's just a structure. Um, you, you know, you, you you look at the early church fathers. You know, you you, you go you you go and you you're building up your your blocks and everything. There's a very rigorous scholastic uh, tradition within within Christianity. It, beyond just the Bible, and to, to say to say that that tradition um, squelches the, the 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 thoughts is just ridiculous to me because it's like a lot of the, a lot of these a lot of these deep thoughts that that came from you know all over the place and say the Enlightenment you know um, the whole idea of a liberal uh, government was created by somebody who was at the very least, theist adjacent. Um, a, a lot of the beliefs of Christianity made it into the whole liberal, uh, liberal government government idea, and that went on even further with Thomas Jefferson, who was a deist. Uh, well, we don't actually know if he was a deist, a theist, or an atheist, because he never actually said when he was alive. He refused to actually answer that question. Because he didn't want his work to be, um, to be, to be poisoned by inner group fighting. He didn't want you know the theists to say, "Oh, he agreed with me, so you know my point, my point of view on the Constitution should be higher than the other ones." That's that's the whole reason why he refused to answer whether he believed in God or not. Um, yeah, and, and but you have this whole entire this whole entire thing, this misrepresenting of, of this of the Enlightenment period in, in in particular. A lot of atheists like to do that, um, and, and early early American history as well. It, it, oh yeah, yeah, I have something to say I, about I, that too. Raise your hand, then, Robert. We're we're in order. We're raising hands here. By the way, our friend JMJ Apologetics is joining late, so we'll put him in as the caboose with whatever he wanted to say. Um, uh, so we'll we'll. Uh, I, I just want to add something that I had forgot in my previous rant, and then it'll be Pragmatics' response. I will credit these people that they did go. There has been an ongoing problem for years. We've got multiple eyewitnesses, multiple victims we've talked to, multiple we're willing to bring in if you want to. There has been a consistent pattern of atheists running in packs to harass and hurt people. Um, we got you guys to intervene in the case of S.J. Thomason, um, mostly through guilting um, and calling you out publicly. Um, however, uh, SJ is one of countless victims of atheist harassment, smearing, sliming, psychologically destroying, mocking and abusing Christians that is commonplace everyday activity for people who are in your little cult network, sir. That was my biggest point. Um, Pragmatic, you wanted to say something. Yeah, no, it's just, 
I don't know about all these personal stories about Kyle and the things he said, although I'm not doubting you. I guess what I try to focus on mainly is, you know, it's sort of been the theme of this whole video is that, you know, you doubt, therefore, atheism, uh, questioning, therefore, atheism. It's this very egotistical belief that, as we've said before, the uh, question, the idea that you can question something and that the idea that this questioning only leads to one result is very <clears throat> egotistical. And it only speaks to the fact that these people have a massive confirmation bias as they're making it. Or at least they're trying to lead you to believe the idea that they have a monopoly on this sort of thing in an effort to try to bring more people to their movement. Because if they can convince you that, well, if you question things, you're just going to end up an atheist, so you might as well make it official now, then they're obviously trying to draw more members in that way. Although I don't, I don't, I don't attribute uh, any ill will to most of these people. I honestly think some of them uh, have, you know, lied themselves into believing this kind of thing. But in all honesty, you know, at the end of the day, a lie is a lie, no matter who you're telling it to, be it yourself or, uh, you know, the, a broader audience. And I think at the end of the day, when they talk about, you know, debate being <clears throat> an obsession, like you're really arguing against yourself. Well, uh, we've mentioned before, everybody has doubts and wanting to try to steel man your opponent in order to see how many holes you can poke in your own ideology and how you can bounce off uh, the criticisms of others is nothing more than, you know, actually wanting to try and, you know, improve your own stance. So I think it's, again, it speaks to a sort of arrogance and it speaks to a sort of egotisticalness amongst these people, whether it's them trying to, uh, you know, sort of double-handedly woo more people into their movement or whether this is simply the result of them having lied to themselves for this long, I can't say. But it is sort of uh, disappointing, to say the least. Yeah, I'll, I'll and, 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 and just about just about everything Two-Face Kyle here said can be turned the other way around. Atheists are obsessed with debating uh, believers all the time. Oh, Especially God, yes, Christians in particular are 90% of the time. We are taking turns. Um, the next person up is going to be, who, who did I miss? Billy, it was your turn. Uh, yeah, basically the, to sum up the entire, to sum up his entire argument, it, it's basically coming at it from a very almost like, I guess you could say narcissistic, very smug, proportion you know it it looks like almost like this this the, this whole segment is directly kind of directed at us because you know we've been getting into debates and arguments with the atheist community and stuff so this is basically them trying to wave us off saying that by wanting to debate us and get into arguments with us it means that we're supposedly insecure about our own position and stuff which i think is laughable given that atheists you know thrive off of debating and trying to debunk basically you know religious assertions and all that stuff it's pretty funny I, I quite agree, Robert. Your turn, and then JMD will get to hear from Robert. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> I just want to say maybe, um, yeah, we could turn this um, whole argument around on him, uh, on Kyle, and say that maybe he's constantly obsessed with like, um, or people like him anyway are, are are constantly obsessed with debating theists, is because deep down inside they actually believe. There's actually some research that suggests that. And two, um. The reason why I got into the whole debating, you know, atheist versus theist debates is because I would hear some of the most awful and inaccurate um, history coming from the um, new atheist crowd online. I would actually, and this happened during high school years, I would actually hear people actually try to say that Pol Pot was a Buddhist. And that just like shocked me given that, you know, my, um, my, high, uh, my high school girlfriend was um, the daughter of um, Kumaru's genocide survivors and they witnessed um Buddhist monks being killed off by the Khmer Rouge regime, and and then on top of it, I, I heard them spouting the other bad history, like um the founding fathers were um they they hated Christianity um and that's why they wanted separation of church and state, and um um Pope um who, who what is it the wartime Pope was um was pro Hitler, and then you had the Dark Ages crap, and I, and so I set out to correct these historical myths, and that's why I got online debating with um militant atheists and um. And yeah, that's, um, other than that, I don't care. I mean, you know, um, yeah, 
I'm just going to repeat the red pill religion and escaping atheism, which came before it always had non-Christians on it, even always had friendly, from day one, we had atheist volunteers who couldn't stand the atheist collective and the atheist movement. Um, and not every, most, uh, not everyone here is a Christian. Please notice that. I've noticed that people in this little cult network always call red pill religion a Christian apologetics group, even though they know we're not. It's another lie they should re they should correct. We have support from atheists who agree with us, multiple ones. We have support from Hindus, from Buddhists, from Jews, yes, from big bad Muslims. We have support from Muslim Mormons, even though I'm hard on Mormons sometimes. We have support from Protestants, even though I'm hard on Protestants sometimes. Um, the, the fact of the matter is I got into this because of the bullying that I experienced and saw in happening to others in so many cases it got out of control. And then I started noticing how when I tried to tell people what was happening, I laughed at or dismissed or called a liar, no matter how much evidence I brought up. And then like Robert too, I noticed how much fake history they were peddling and would not correct and how much questionable science they were peddling and would not correct. And meanwhile, went out of their way to bully and abuse and mock and demean and marginalize religious view believers of, of multiple religions for no other reason other than malice. It was very obvious. And to convert people, not deconvert, but to convert them. By the way, if you're on a mission to so-called deconvert people, you're in a club, you're in a cult, and uh, you're pushing in an ideology. When I was an atheist, um, I just simply didn't bother looking at religious stuff because it didn't interest me and I didn't think it was, it was any of it was real. But I didn't figure it was my business to proselytize that to people. JMD Apologetics, so good to see you. We haven't seen you in a while, man. What's going on? What you got to say now that we're almost done? Yeah, um, well, uh, Heretic Sympathizer here. If you <laughs> caught my uh, drift from, you know, what I posted on Discord earlier. But um, perhaps we can talk about that afterwards. But, you know, I, I, I did my response with IP, and just this video was, in, in, in one word, shitty <laughs> with their <laughs> arguments. I mean, yeah, all, all they discussed was not how this leads to atheism, but rather just what you should do if you're an epistemologist, which everyone likes to know how do we know things. Being open-minded, uh, debating other people, which doesn't affirm any proposition. I mean, if that's true, then atheists debate us all the time. And they are constantly attacking me and, you know, uh, of course, everyone from Red Pell and especially DA. And does that mean they're secretly Christian or the presuppositionalist right? Nice. And, yeah, yeah. Are, are, are the Scythe and Bruden Kate right? Are they, you know, just debating us so they can try and some pre suppress the uh, truth and unrighteousness and so on? I, I, I just found the whole video to be a non sequitur, hence the non sequitur show. Yeah, literally. That. yeah li literally, which is my word. I'll, I'll butcher that again. But uh, I, again, I, I thought the video, um, I thought Holy Kool Aid section was the worst when uh, he went on oh, his rant. For sure. Yeah. With, um, scientific assertion after pseudoscientific yeah. assertion after pseudoscientific assertion. I mean, just on the science, he was making massive claims he couldn't back up. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, um, okay. In Deflating Atheism, at least in chat, he says he started his channel to, to uh, prevent them from poisoning more minds. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I looked at my son who believed in God early um, when I asked him. Um, uh, uh, I won't get into the whole thing, but science overwhelmingly shows that's a natural belief children come to without any help at all from their parents. And in fact, most children raised in dogmatically atheist homes eventually apostatize out because it's not particularly rational to be an atheist, even if you don't become a Christian. That's what science tells us. We've got lots of other science on, on what atheism is like and its psychology and what causes it and where it comes from. Um, are you guys interested in any of that science? I showed some of it to Shannon, but she just dismissed all of it. Um, um, but that's what atheist cult recruiters do. They dismiss all scientific evidence and all other forms of evidence that doesn't match their worldview. I like to say, they like to ask this question, 4,000 religions and only yours is right? <laughs> um, the real question is 4,000 religions and they're all wrong. Yeah. Where do you get that assertion? <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, so we do need to be wrapping up here and we have been running long. Um, does any, and yeah, we really do need to wrap. We should stop. We're almost at two hours. If anybody wants, has something really urgent, they want to get out, say something in chat now and I'll let you go. Otherwise we're closing this cause we are too crowded. Oh, uh, we got a super chat. Sorry. I don't know how to do super chats. Let's have a look. Uh, nice in the chat. I, I I can read it off real quick. How do I accept one of these? 
I don't even know how to accept the super chat. I I think they just go to Google AdSense if you have a Google AdSense account. Oh well, thank you, Strontium Nice Nineteen. He says, "Nice seeing y'all on Arini's stream yesterday. Come back anytime soon. I hope to be back on Davis Arini's stream." And uh, 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 thank you for asking. In fact, I'll show you if you go to Davis. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that chat. We're going to have a chat. With, uh, we're actually going to mirror it on this channel in two parts. We had a great conversation. Me, Davis Arini and uh john c Wright uh started talking for about an hour about nerd stuff and star wars and tolkien and all that sort of stuff and then in the last hour we all explained why we were religious three of us were catholic one of us was a, was a was a was a pagan um but we all shared our personal uh faith journeys uh, so we're going to be uploading that here tonight um we're going to go ahead and close now everybody be, please be sure to uh and again thank you strontium i appreciate it come back anytime uh, I don't have a, I got a, I don't even know how to accept uh, these super chats, but um, thanks to everybody for joining us, especially JMD Apologetics. Please go check out his channel. He's a Mullinist sort of in the William Lane Craig tradition as far as I understand it. Please be sure to check out um, uh, History Net's channel. Please be sure to check out, uh, who, who, who the heck am I missing? Who's channel? I mean, don't, don't check out Deflating Atheism's channel. He has nothing good, but you know. No, there's nothing good on depleting <laughs> atheism. You never want to yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Uh, great. Billy's got a channel. cromwell has got a channel. Listen, guys, I've, I've really appreciated this. As I've mentioned before, we're doing fewer. We're, we're still going to keep doing atheist videos forever because we want to train other people and get other people to see that you can simply take the atheists on on their own on their own ground. Atheists constantly make claims they cannot back up with evidence. And atheists constantly. This state history that is and they are easily debunked and won't acknowledge it They constantly misstate science and they won't be called on it or challenged on it um, then and and they frequently mistreat condescend to bully mock and otherwise mistreat religious people and frequently um, They make themselves look stupid and horrible and if you go ahead and look the, this this popular atheist movement that was started among young millennials back a little more than 10 years ago um, uh, It has never Never gone above a certain level most people are unconvinced in fact it, something like seven eight years ago Sam Harris and and Daniel Dennett and others just admitted it that that atheism would always be a minority position Because most people will not be atheist with you and and that's just a scientific reality you might want to face and you might want to face the reality that you're going to be spending the rest of your life surrounded by religious people the question you have to ask is do you want to spend the rest of your life abusing them mistreating them avoiding them uh, uh lying about them uh do you want to be our overlords and our rulers um, and if that's a big if religion ever does go away it'll be after they're long dead and forgotten absolutely so so, all right, everybody, this has been fun. Like I said, we're going to be doing other things than atheist videos on a regular basis. But don't worry, we'll still do probably at least one a week because uh, uh, we want more and more and more people to see that you can expose and debunk these people. Um, now, mind you, debunking them doesn't mean you become Christian. It doesn't mean you become anything. It just means you learn how to apply skepticism correctly and you start getting skeptical of the atheist crowd and you start noticing that they really are a cult with talking points and propaganda um, and they want your money. Um, uh, you should start getting a little more skeptical of all of it. All right, everybody. Well, uh, uh, we're still here every night, so please be sure to remember, uh, in these days of social media censorship, we're always going to be found on redpillreligion.com. We could use your spiritual as well as your financial support. If you're a nerd and you want to talk about something and aren't a jerk, you can, we, we, we hang out and talk on our Discord chat server every day with friendly, rational atheists, with agnostics, with Buddhists, with deists, with apostate Christians, with ex-Catholics, with ex-Protestants, with Orthodox Christians, Anglican Christians, Jews. We are open to talk to people who have ideas and want real dialogue. Russian bots, too. Oh, yeah, and Russian bots like, like Dimitri there. All right, everybody, so please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies, and please give us your financial support if you can on redpillreligion.com. God bless everybody. God bless.